Hello everybody and welcome to the Tuesday edition of Video Clips and a few announcements and they're really all about next year except for one. First one is there's still enough time for us to send holiday gifts for you. We have gingerbread biscotti and cookie boxes and autographed books and gift certificates and beautiful baskets and trail mix and kale chips and beautiful gifts for people who you care about. So there's still time for that this year. Everything else is a next year thing. Um, school for the Wellness Farm Institute starts January 19th. That sounds like it's a long way off, but actually not so much. So if you're thinking of taking classes at our school, this is a good time to check the schedule online, or you can email me at pampopper at msn.com if you have questions. We can even set up a time to talk. Um, the advanced study courses, we've got those set for the first quarter of the year. We're going to be talking about some amazing books and some amazing information like the effect of exercise on mood. You know, there's a whole book out about that now. And um, another one is spontaneous, um, is uh, radical remissions. It's about spontaneous recovery from terminal disease. So lots of good stuff there. Check online. If you haven't been to wellnessfarm.com, uh, up in the left-hand corner, there's an events calendar. And we'll have all of the January, February, March stuff posted probably within the next week or so. And you can see all the fun things there will be to participate in next year and coming soon a new website too so look forward to that all right a couple of topics i want to cover today and the first one has to do with early warning signs of cardiovascular disease and according to a recent study patients who have early signs of heart disease or what's called non-obstructive coronary artery disease have a significantly increased risk of having a heart attack and dying and by the way, non-obstructive coronary artery disease presents itself as atherosclerotic plaque that begins to line the arteries but doesn't obstruct blood flow or cause chest pain. And cardiologists will often refer to it as insignificant. They send patients home and tell them that they're fine. On the other hand, when somebody has obstructive coronary artery disease, that's like, oh my gosh, we have to do something about this right away. And usually it's angioplasty or bypass surgery. Well, in this particular study, and it's really interesting as far as I'm concerned, they looked at over 37,000 veterans who had undergone elective coronary angiography. And at the time, 22.3% had non-obstructive coronary artery disease, 55.4% had obstructive coronary artery disease. Within a year, 845 patients died and 385 were hospitalized after a heart attack. Following these patients showed that the risk of having a heart attack was actually based on the degree to which the coronary artery disease had progressed, how much um, narrowing of the vessels and how many vessels were involved, rather than, as it was previously believed, when you had non-obstructive coronary artery disease, you didn't have to worry about it. It's only when it became obstructive that you started being concerned. This study clearly showed that you should worry about it at the earliest signs, and outcomes were similar um, for both groups in terms of heart attack and mortality. Furthermore, patients with non-obstructive coronary artery disease had two to four and a half times greater risk of myocardial infarction than patients who had no signs. The authors concluded that it's important to recognize the risks associated with this early stage disease and that the studies were consistent with other studies showing that the, the majority of heart attacks actually aren't caused by blockages in the arteries close to the heart, but by the systemic coronary artery disease that, um, that people have. And you might recall in the movie Forks Over Knives, Dr. Terry Mason says, if you have coronary artery disease in one place, you've got it everywhere. All right, so studies, um, the authors also concluded that you know, we should look at the putting people on drugs earlier, of course, the usual party line, but studies show that the drugs don't work very well. For example, statin drugs reduce the risk of a heart attack by about 1.2 to 1.6%. Dietary intervention, on the other hand, works really well, and it takes care of the early stage coronary patients, the late stage coronary patients, everybody ends up better. And by the way, diet is the only thing that, that addresses this systemically. We don't have any great roto-rooter system that goes through the arteries of the body cleaning out all the crud that results from the standard American diet. Now I want, I want to add one thing to this. What this study is basically showing is that the early stage of coronary artery disease is serious and we should take it seriously. I want to back it up further than that. How about we have everybody keep a food journal and when we see that they're eating the wrong foods, too much fat, too much cholesterol, too much animal food, at that point in time, we say, hey, it's time for a change. Let's not wait until your arteries are clogged or you have early stage disease. How about we even prevent that from happening? Well, we're a long way from that happening, but you know, I'll keep talking about it until doctors start talking about it. How about that? 
All right. Next is one of my favorite topics because during the last several years when I discuss my own exercise program, I've been told on numerous occasions that I exercise too much, that too much exercise is bad for you, and now that I'm officially a senior citizen, I can't even believe I heard those words coming out of my mouth, but people tell you, you know, your joints are not going to hold up if you keep running and you're going to blow out your knees and running is bad for humans. And I've always countered that humans are designed to move, that becoming less active is a bigger risk factor than being too active. And as for the suggestion that I'm going to blow up my knees from running, actually the evidence is the opposite, and you can look at articles on that in the Health Brace Online Library. Well, I love this article written by Dr. Michael Joyner. It was posted on Medscape. I'm going to talk about it today. And he addresses the too much exercise theory. He starts by pointing out that studies are really clear that almost any amount of physical activity is beneficial and protects some against cardiovascular disease and all-cause mortality, even just a few minutes a day. And boy, that's pretty good news for the tens of millions of Americans who do absolutely nothing. You just start moving a little bit and it makes a huge difference. He also mentions that not everybody that responds to exercise in the same way. For example, not everybody sees their biomarkers like glucose levels and um, cholesterol levels go down as a result of exercise. But my comment, this isn't Joyner's comment, but I think it's important to insert that probably many of these people exercising aren't eating an optimal diet like the wellness forums. Even so, Joyner states that about 40% of the protective effects of exercise are not related to traditional risk factors like cholesterol, but rather blood vessel remodeling and changes in the fight or flight part of the nervous system. This means that almost everybody benefits from exercise. Of course, the best co combination is a wellness forum diet and exercise. Again, that's my comment, not Joyner's. He didn't talk about the wellness forum in his article. All right. His research clearly shows, and it was a well-referenced article, that there isn't any U-shaped or J-shaped mortality curve for exercise. In other words, sometimes what you see is that something, a drug or supplement, is beneficial for a while, and then the curve means that there, it turns around and it starts to hurt people in a dose-dependent manner. Nothing like that for exercise. There doesn't seem to be any amount of it that increases your risk of disease or, or mortality. He cites a study showing that competitive master athletes maintain remarkable heart health and impressive levels of ventricular performance as they age. And you might remember a week or two ago I talked about a study in which sedentary humans were put on an exercise program and within a few months they started to have uh, the blood vessels and the heart muscle of advanced athletes. So not too late to start. He also cites data on almost 75,000 Swedish citizens who participated in long distance marathon skiing and shows that those who finished more races had lower mortality rates. And he says it's really hard to find data to support the too much as exercise is bad for you theory. Now he does give a, give a couple of caveats and one is that intense, you know, prolonged intense training could slightly, tiny little increase in the risk of developing atrial fibrillation. And by the way, we don't talk to too many people who are exercising too much around here, so I don't know that that's a big issue. And the other thing is that some cardiac patients who are in such fragile state, they could have some risk. But he's quick to say that these are tiny risks compared to the risk of remaining sedentary. That exercise has a powerful and well-described dose-dependent effect on mortality and cardiovascular disease. And I love his quote at the end. He says that we should be worrying more about the people who are doing nothing than, quote, yapping about the unproven hypothetical possibility that a tiny group of people might be doing too much. All right, I agree. So you might wonder, why am I bringing this up in the middle of December? What is up with the exercise? Well, I nag about exercise all the time, but this is a time of year when people, even people who exercise tend to slack off, and people who don't exercise tend to say, I'll start in January. Okay, if you're exercising, don't slack off. And if you're not exercising, don't wait till January. I don't believe in New Year's resolutions. I believe in changing people's lives. So change yours, get up, start moving. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would be interested in watching it. And I will be back to you on Thursday with more news.